dialogue with Ms. Gita Lutra, Senior Advocate, Supreme Court of India on freedom of speech versus fair trial. Let's give her a big round of applause, everybody. Hi, good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Thanks for joining in. Um, over to you. Right. So, um, I, um, I thought let me speak on this subject because this is so topical in today's day with the fact that uh, today you are having media trials and more media trials. In fact, sometimes we think that actually there should be no trial in court. It's all being governed by media and being decided by media. So uh, one of the, and this is a off quoted uh, uh, quote and would be emanating from many legal luminaries. The fact that there is now what is known as a parallel trial and that parallel trial you would have seen in many cases, some for the good, some for the bad. You would have seen it in Manu Sharma's case. You saw it in the Arushi Talwar case. You are virtually seeing it in the Sushant Rajput case. So the question is, where till what? Where should the bug stop? When should media stop? Or till when can media go on and become invasive instead of investigative? Now, one aspect which we all know is that media is the fourth pillar of democracy. Media is a watchdog and it is not only a watchdog for the executive legislature, for the judiciary, but the extent to which media should, should travel and should trench is the issue which is there before us. Let's look at the US. There's the First Amendment, which says freedom of speech and expression. Then you have the Sixth Amendment, which says a fair trial. What is the balance that the US has achieved? The US has balanced for the greater part uh, in favor of freedom of speech and expression and has therefore let media have a fair, free hand in trials, whereas it has in that sense tried to assure a fair trial by other means. How does it assure a fair trial by other means? It can sequester the jury, it can transfer matters from one, uh, ju one jurisdiction to another, where media is being very um, pervasive. But today we are in a day of social media. So media's pervasiveness will not stop if I take away the trial from Bombay and bring it to Delhi. Media's pervasiveness will not stop if I bring it from any part of India to another part of India. So the question then is, and I'm not talking only of the electronic media or the written media. I'm talking of the social media as well, because it is after the advent of social media with handles like Twitter that a person is being prejudged before he is convicted, before he's even being tried. So the 200th Law Commission report says that uh, in order to prevent trial by media, the moment charges are framed, then media has to restrain itself. And media has only to do true reporting. Although this report has not been accepted as yet, according to me, it is too little, too late. Because at the stage of charge, Minds are already made up. You've not even filed a charge sheet and you see what happened in Arushi. You have not filed a charge sheet and you see what is happening in Sushant Singh. Although 
we are at a time where both victimology as well as the rights of accused are important. But the fact is that there is a presumption of innocence unless a person is guilty. And that in the criminal justice system is the golden mantra. And Supreme Court said this in various occasions. We don't have a law where you can compensate the person. And in any case, how would you compensate a person for even one day of imprisonment? How do you return the liberty, the youth, the freedom and the mindset to a person who's been incarcerated? One day of incarceration is bad enough. So this cannot be an argument that ultimately the person's being exonerated. In fact, it is precisely for this reason that media should not be able to report on an invasive manner by carrying on a parallel trial, by having people who are ferreted out. And the U.S. observed this in Estes versus Texas in 1965 itself, that, you know, there will be media and a lawyer, uh, Haddock, was a well-known lawyer, saying that, you know, the moment you have a celebrity defendant, you are sitting in a looking class. There are people who are bringing in witnesses. They are ferreting out information. They are extolling it again and again to the press. It's being repeated again and again in social media so that you have no right of privacy. You have no right of freedom. You have no right of free trial. So the question here is that, yes, we are talking in terms of freedom of speech and expression. The same country that the moment independence was declared when Ramesh Thapar's book was and uh, magazines were being, uh, there was being censorship. The courts came down heavily and said there is freedom of speech and expression. When the organizer was publishing, publishing something after independence, the courts came down heavily in, I think it was Bridge Pushin's case. Now, what is, why is it that even after so many years of independence, we are still asking the same questions? We are still depending on toothless bodies like the press council uh, to actually monitor the press. Should there be pre-censorship? Uh, pre should there be information which would be prejudicial to an accused? Should it be censored? That's an essential question. And one of th this question has arisen only recently again when the Bombay High Court was dealing with uh, a, a petition by Riya Chakravarti and the court said there has to be self-restraint. But the question that has now arisen is, should there be some element of pre-restraint or should it only remain self-restraint? Or should we make the press council stronger so that the self-restraint is by their own bodies? That is an essential issue which we all need to look at because ultimately the freedom of the press is integral to all of us, but so is a free trial. Now, um, if I go to two cases of India, I'll maybe refer to two cases of the US and one of the UK and um, uh, share these with you. Take um, in PUCL versus State of Maharashtra, the Supreme Court said that press has to be restrained, public has to be restrained, and you cannot be publishing something. And Justice Chandrachud just said that uh, with regard to reports coming on some television channel. And he said, you can't be invidious. You cannot you cannot be speaking about one community or another 
in terms which will incite be inciting and be abusive you cannot speak about people like this there has to be a restraint on freedom of speech but the case that i talked about pucl versus state of maharashtra supreme court came down heavily and said that the press has to be restrained as trial has to be fair free and any person does not have to face a pre trial conviction similarly in nirbhay's case a documentary was published called india's daughter the delhi high court by a division bench said that it could not the the film could not be uh, exhibited till the case was decided in the supreme court and that is why and this was further confirmed by the chief justice's bench now this because why is this because judges are fallible judges may be people who are trained not to look at what media reports but ultimately they are fallible this they can be prejudice caused by a media trial that can play on the mind of the judge when looking at bail when looking at conviction they would try to remain unbiased but ultimately being humans they are also fallible they are not living in ivory towers much as they would want to keep themselves sequestered from what the press is reporting when they are dealing with the case now coming to the us you would remember the oj simpson trial most people remember it's a beautiful series on netflix worth watching i think it's five five series uh, or something now in the oj simpson trial he was blamed for murdering his wife and wife's best friend now that case was perhaps the most watched case in history of mankind and yet uh, and was covered widely by television by social media day to day trials were being and he was convicted uh, by the media even before he was held guilty however due to various aspects dna aspects due to the glove not fitting due to various uh, loopholes which the defense was able to raise ultimately uh, in the, in that case he was acquitted but it is no thanks to media similarly there was a lady who was accused of killing her infant child whose body was found in the forest dug in the woods now uh, this uh, lady was actually tried in the us it became such that there was a daily reporting on that case and that case uh, led ultimately again resulted in acquittal but led the us for the first time once again to rethink that should the first amendment be completely untrammeled or should there be a balance with the 6th amendment and then what has been the concept is you look at speech free speech having a value so there'll be a low value speech and there'll be a high value speech you do not restrict high value speech but low value speech which will prejudice a trial the question that is being raised is should such speech be restricted should there be some kind of warning or gag orders and the weight of opinion seems to be that although freedom of speech is sacrosanct in order that the right of trial of an accused in a day of social media does not get trammeled there should be some balance which should be brought in 
originally the us way the courts in us addressed it was that the damages and penalty were very high post the coverage if found to be false but now there is a trend towards a, the tide is turning there is a trend that we could think of low value speech which is prejudicial to a trial being restricted now the uk has always favored the concept of free trial saying the life and liberty of a person is far more important is of utmost importance and would therefore be considered sacrosanct and more important but in the balance there have been cases like the thaldomite case where the times reported it because it was getting brushed under the carpet and it was held that that reporting in fact lord denning was the judge that that reporting was absolutely in place because you could not have people plaintiffs giving in because the pharma group was so powerful that they were being able to force these people whose children had been born deformed because of consuming thal of the parents mothers taking thaldomide that these children that these parents because they belong to strata which was not financially and legally powerful that they were settling matters and it was reported that the matter should be expedited and heard and although a gag order was sought the court rejected that order here in india we've seen that press has played important roles in cases like the rathor case in sengar case in some cases where cases were being brushed or could have been brushed under the carpet so while an accused has a right of a fair trial which also would be denied when the media is interfering at the, or is becoming invasive as compared to investigative or assisting the police rather than carrying on a fair trial the question here is we have to make sure that there is a balance and that balance we have to yet bring in india so that the people who are accused in our country for good reasons or bad do not feel that their rights are already washed away even before they bring in their defense and that i feel is perhaps what we need to look at here we need to look at the fact that are we reporting what is justified what is fair what is being brushed under the carpet without making without trampling on the rights of a person who may be guilty in the public eye every person has a right of defense every person has a right to show that he is innocent a person brings his reputation on the table after many years of hard work and that reputation should not be washed away by anyone in a cavalier manner thank you ma'am thank you so much for sharing your views with us today and like you said uh, there is certainly a, a requirement to see where is this reporting going there is loss of uh, tempered and balanced views coming from the media houses uh, we are uh, you know uh, proven until guilty is lost sight of and in that regard ma'am my question is what are the kind of reforms that we need as of today and also what is the kind of accountability that we can hold these media houses to 
when something like this happens see the um, unfortunately in india once we give a license we don't keep and to good measure in its own way because ultimately a media house should be able to express its views fearlessly and without fear of reprisals so this is the first most important aspect but having said that media can't be irresponsible so how do we bring accountability uh the best way to be, bring accountability say for lawyers chartered accountants is that you have your own councils which are manned by people who are not men of straw and you know that you have giants in the industry in the press industry we have such huge giants i don't want to name anyone but you have giants there they can be heading the industry say the press council you could have one judge who is known for his um, uh, strength of views be there and you should give more strength to the press council so there's no point that the press council on 28th august says look we are telling everyone to up, apply restraint in this case and then sit back and hope that that's their golden word it's not a golden word and also you don't want the court to be giving gag orders because you know the moment you start too many gag orders they'll be in good cases and in the bad cases and we don't really want that because you do one of the and i honestly feel is not really the fourth pillar it may be even the first pillar so we we can't have the press restrained at the same time there has to be self restraint and our audiences have to become more alive also if they see reporting of this just because it minds it matches with my mind view it doesn't mean that i should then add to that trp if it is not being a debate which is fair giving all chance sides a view and if it is not invasive we would all welcome it the country should welcome it ultimately we have to be educated by the media the normal man the common man the average person even the any person for that matter looks at a newspaper or a media report every day to keep himself updated so the question is how fair is the reporting and for that i think the, there has to be stronger self restraint or the courts will have to come down strongly into three cases and then the self restraint will may restart thank you so much ma'am we hope so that happens and uh, ma'am your uh, words to our achievers today and what do you think they should be doing to succeed in life so um, to the achievers i want to say i was listening to what um, saurabh was saying that you just have to hang in there i i want to add to it that you have to hang in there with integrity with realizing that law is a service most of us forget this that law is a service we are treating it as a business it's not a business it is a service you may alongside do a business but law is a service and that's why behind the gown of advocates there is a pocket that pocket was that whoever could afford to give whatever could put it there and people would not be demanding or asking now obviously with growth in population growth in lawyers in the way the world is 
that may not be a reality but let's remember it's a service so while we do it with integrity i also feel that you should be passionate about your work but you should be objective about it so bring to it diligence passion but objectivity so that we are fair to our opponents we are fair to our colleagues and we are fair to the court thank you so much ma'am beautiful thoughts there and we really hope so that happens thank you so much for joining us and guiding us all today ma'am thank you so much thank you thank you so much ashma and thank you ma'am for sharing your views on this burning topic it was great having you here thank you very much ma'am thank you